I've lived and worked in France for many years, and one thing I really love is the attitude towards the art of the table, l'art de la table, as well as the joie de vivre that goes with eating and entertaining. This video is about things the French know about the art of entertaining and how you can bring it to your everyday home life. Watch to the end for a bonus tip that will leave your dinner party guests leaving with a smile. I'm Alexandra Alenska, and I've worked as a creative director and stylist for luxury brands including Chanel Celine and Vanessa Bruno, as well as magazines including Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. And I've been featured in international press including Forbes, Elle, The Sunday Times and The Independent. I now help directors and leaders in midlife and beyond to rebalance that work, 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 busy, busy, busy lifestyle you've become accustomed to. Because you know life's too short to stay in that career-driven comfort zone. I help you to redesign and restyle your life, especially at midlife with life-changing transitions such as the breakup of relationship, divorce, menopause, or turning 40 and beyond. From your home and your wardrobe to your mind and social life, I help you with your stylish next chapter to step into your best life because I know you're ready to rock life again. Firstly, don't be afraid to buy in and garnish with a flourish of seasonal vegetables. Every arrondissement in Paris has markets aplenty selling gorgeous seasonal vegetables grown with love. And also at least one traiteur, shops selling amazing freshly prepared fish, meat and vegetables. On a trip to France as a child, I was shocked to observe a distant relative nonchalantly buying ready-cooked salmon in a creamy sauce. It was so delicious. Served with crunchy baguette rather than preparing it herself. And since then, I've long discovered the joys of Picard, because it's okay to cheat sometimes. Picard is France's very own frozen food shop and a chic version of Iceland in England. There you'll find frozen chanterelle as well as vol au vent, and their fondant au chocolat that you can reheat in the oven is really good. Consider how you can elevate pre-bought and frozen food, even if you order in, to look and taste beautiful. Don't save your porcelain for best and serve your food on your most gorgeous china and enjoy. This brings us to the idea of the l'art de la table and savoir vivre, the art of entertaining, if you like. After the days of the French Revolution, ideas of savoir vivre changed and Napoleon believed that elegance was a statement of power. The nouvelle riche of the time were introduced to a slightly more democratized rise in companies selling things such as crystal, beautifully made, beautifully crafted crystal. Not to mention a proliferation of etiquette rules and books which seeped into everyday home life. The power of elegance, as well as certain formalities, is still relevant today. And your home doesn't have to look like Sofia Coppola's version of Marie Antoinette at Versailles to be inspired by the art of the table. Giving yourself time to enjoy food as a moment of pleasure, a daily ritual, is a beautiful part of French culture and consider it as a multisensorial experience. The feel of the thickness of the porcelain coffee cup between your lips or the crystal glass that you drink your wine from. The gentle glow of candles and the weight of quality cutlery and the visual feast of the table settings and that's before we even start the food. Investing in a quality collection of crockery and cutlery and bowls of various sizes to display food on is a worthwhile pursuit, even if you don't host many dinner parties. It elevates your everyday. And if you'd like more tips on entertaining like a Parisian, you can find the link to my free guide below. And if you're interested in all things style, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for more content like this. The French table setting, both more or less formal, is an art unto itself. One may have more accoutrements, but the basic principle is the same. Of course, that means eating mostly from the outside in with the cutlery. And in a French table setting, glasses are positioned to the top right with the water glass on the left and the wine glass on the right. If there are three glasses, then it's water, red wine, white wine. And if you need an easy way to remember this, it's that Jesus made water into the wine. The water comes first, very healthy. Often the water glass will also be a stemmed glass. I was on holiday with a French family recently and the three-year-old was thrilled to have a stemmed glass for his water, be it in plastic, so that he could feel just like the rest of us. It's never too early to start, right? Or too late. I believe it's about finding a balance between respecting the guidelines that can actually make everyone feel more comfortable. Your place is framed. And if you know the rules, it's clear. And that brings a certain relaxation and not worrying too much about everything being perfect or being too strict with it all. 
What do you prefer, casual or formal dining? Let me know in the comments below. An example would be the bread basket. I recall visiting French family when I was younger and terribly shy, and there was a baguette plonked on the table that they all ripped chunks from with their hands. Frankly, I didn't get a look in. As an adult and in familiar company, I can feel more at ease with this, but I still prefer a basket of sliced bread. Sometimes people are shocked when they come to Paris as bread is usually served without butter and often without a bread plate. Your individual piece of bread is usually placed on the tablecloth or teetering on the edge of your dining plate. Also, it's used with gusto to mop up any remaining sauce at the end of your meal. Delicious. A napkin is a key part of lap de la table, of course, and there's nothing like a generous cotton or linen napkin to decorate the table and protect your clothing. Fold it in half and place it on your lap, leaving it on your chair if you pop to the bathroom. For family suppers, it can be fun to customize a napkin ring for each member of the family so that the correct napkin can be easily identified should you not need to wash them after every single meal. To some, it may seem rather formal, but in fact, the aim is to feel comfortable and enjoy the food as well as the company because riveting conversation and in-depth discussions, especially about food, are crucial. In France, it sometimes feels like everyone is an expert when it comes to food, even if they don't cook. And they often won't hold anything back from gently telling you that you've overcooked your fondant au chocolat. Yes, I've had that. Don't worry, they'll still eat it. Just add a big blob of creme fraiche, if in doubt. To informing you that they prefer the macaron or marron glacé from another supplier. It's not meant maliciously. It's just a national pastime. Sometimes Parisians are described as rude. And it's true that perhaps they are generally less friendly than elsewhere in France. But on the other hand, there's also a refreshing honesty, authenticity and confidence at play, which is incredibly alluring. No forced smiles here wishing you a nice day or other fake pleasantries. It takes time and real conversation to get to know someone after all, to be true friends, and where better than over a sparkling table setting and a delicious meal. Finally, I have my own confession. At the end of dinner, coffee and calvados go a long way, but so does something surprising. In my golden style guidelines, I always say add a twist. So if all of this art de la table is getting a little too tasteful for you, my tip is to make like the ambassador's reception and end the meal with a mountain of Ferrero Rocher. People secretly love them, even the Parisians. Et voila, merci and thank you for watching. À la prochaine, bye bye.